Hi everyone, Mary Petricone here, Secret Life of Artist. I want to give a shout out to Nanette who made this necklace and the artist in Alaska who made these when I lived there. Can't remember her name. Okay, let's start out with the honest truth about why I'm making these videos. I'm making these videos because I'm personally trying to push past a feeling of uncomfortability about making videos. That's just my personality. When I'm scared of doing something, I do it. I get in there. You're not going to keep me from doing it. I don't want my feelings to keep me from doing things. So I'm doing it for that reason, which is personal. And I'm also doing it because I'm isolating. I want to connect with people. And it gives me an opportunity to talk about something that usually does not come up in art classes or in art books. They talk about technique, but they don't talk about the feelings that come up. The feelings that come up, and this is also with children, it's not just adults, very often people quit doing art because they, they are not as good as in their mind they want to be. I can't emphasize this enough. Think about another area Maybe your job or something else you've learned. If you quit doing it, you would never get good at it. And I do understand those feelings. One of the things that my studio is, it's non-competitive. Everybody's working on their own thing at their own pace because it takes out the comparison factor that humans naturally do when they're all working on the same thing. They look over, they get discouraged. Mine isn't as good as that person's. That's real. Okay, there's that. Then There is growth spurts in art. If you think you're going to love everything that you do, I'm here to tell you you're not. You're going to have some hits, some misses. I try to tell people that I teach not to throw away their artwork. Eventually you may throw away something, but if you find yourself doing that a lot, you're not giving yourself an opportunity to go back, rework it, learn through it. Now, I'm making an assumption here, and the assumption is that somewhere inside of you, you want to be creative in some visual form, and that's why you're watching this, or that's why you're interested in a video that would be about artists. And probably the third thing is to think that you're not going to be sensitive about what you've made. It comes from inside of you. It's hard. 
you know, artist or a little visual artist are a little bit different than performance artist. My husband is an actor and not that he doesn't get nervous getting up there in front of people, but that's a whole different art form. Most artists, I told you, I'm uncomfortable getting in front of this. I can hide behind my artwork and what I write all day long. But to get in front of a video, no. And when you think about it, they usually work alone. It's like writers. So when you put your artwork out there, you go to get something framed that you've done, or you go to show it to people, don't expect that that isn't going to bring up some discomfort. Now, maybe it won't with you. Maybe you think everything you do is great. Stop watching the video right now because I'm not that person. If you've got that part of it handled, but I've watched hundreds of people. That's why studios work because you can work out those problems in there with other people that are not judging you in the process. They're going, oh, I like what you just did with that. You do? You know, we're, we can see it right now in going through this social isolation. It's a human thing to want people to get you, to want them to get your artwork. That isn't an insecurity, it's a need. Now, even though it is a need, it's a really good thing to get over, too. To not stop it because somebody went, mm, I, I like the last thing you did. Why don't you do more of those? I should do a whole video on what people tell you. It's like... Uh, my brother-in-law, John, is a photographer and people telling him what to take a picture of. Just go take a picture. Quit telling John what to do. So people do that with artists. The closest that they'll ever get to doing art is telling you how to do art or what you did wrong. I'm not saying these things to be negative. I'm saying these things because this is what's going, these are the, the human things that are going to keep you from doing it. And I'm trying to encourage you, if you push past those things and understand that all artists have these feelings that I know of, they don't get talked about a lot. You know, if you want to read a good book on it, Art and Fear is very good. All right. Believe it or not, I've run out of things to say. Oh, I want to tell you one last thing. There's always one last thing with me. That is, you are going to have days like yesterday... It is so strange what we're going through. And I just, I could not get it together to do any artwork yesterday. But what I did do is go in and organize my art supplies. It's perfectly okay to when that happens. It isn't that you've, you've got a block or you lost. Just do what you can do. Go in and sharpen your pencils. Get your art supplies ready for when the idea does come. Have a nice day. Keep the faith. 
Give somebody some of your artwork. This morning, the guy that cleans our pool brought around, along his probably seven-year-old daughter, Stephanie, to help, and he was teaching her, he was testing her spelling words while they were cleaning the pool. He was such a great example of a work ethic, and he asked her if he got her, she got her schoolwork done yesterday. So when I went out, I gave her a children's drawing book, wrapped it up as a present. You know, I actually went a couple of years to nursing school. It wasn't my calling. There would be people who didn't make it through life if I was a nurse. It definitely is a calling and a gift. Right now, it's hard to be on the sidelines. It's hard to watch those people that I know that did go through nursing school and are in New York going in every day. Feel like you're not given.